if you own a set of Orca FPV goggles, the most important thing you can do right now is do not turn them on if you have not done so already. There is a firmware bug that only triggers on or after the 29th of the 4th, 2023, that will result in your goggles getting stuck in bootloader mode. If this has already happened to you, you will either see this screen telling you you are in bootloader mode or you will get this image up on the display. However, if you have not powered up your goggles on the 29th or later, there is a process that you can do, i.e. a firmware update, that will prevent this brick happening in the first place. Now, this first of all became apparent yesterday. I'm recording this on the 30th, on the 29th, and Orca really did work very, very fast to provide info to its users, and they actually provided a solution for some of their goggles, but not all of them. Today, though, we have a bit more information, and I want to walk you through exactly what the situation is, depending on what goggle you have. Now, just to be clear about a few things up front, this affects all FPV goggles by Orca, whether it be the original FPV ones, the V2s, which is the FPV1 pilots, or the new race goggle. What is different though, is what you do if you have already ended up in this soft brick situation. As of today, there is a recovery process for the V2 goggles, which is the pilots and the race goggles, but there isn't a recovery process yet for the V1s. It is also important to understand there is a different process to follow depending on if you haven't turned on your goggles yet and they won't actually be bricked, or if you've already powered them up and they've entered this soft brick state. Now, what I'm going to do is jump over to the desktop and I'm going to walk you through the situation so you fully understand what you need to do. Now, if we take a look, you can see the original post was put on the Orca page yesterday and it basically says there's a bug in their firmware that affects the date and time feature, causing the goggles to enter bootloader mode. They are devoting all of their resources to getting it fixed. Now, there was a bunch of posts released on this yesterday. I'm not going to go through the timeline on this. I will say, though, that they did work very, very fast to try and get this sorted. Today, though, we've had an updated post from Tony, which is this one here, that walks us through the current situation. And there are basically two paths to follow. You're either someone who has a set of these goggles, but hasn't turned them on yet. So basically the goggles will brick when you try to use them or you're someone who has used them and they're already in this soft bricked state. If you haven't powered them on, the good news is they probably won't brick as soon as you turn them on and there is a recovery process allowing you to install the firmware without actually taking the goggles apart. However, if your goggles are already bricked, there is a solution, but it will involve taking the goggles apart and shorting two pads that allow you to do a recovery process. Unfortunately though, that process is only for the V2 goggles, which is the FPV1 pilots and the race goggle. If we take a look at the document, it is called unbricking FPV1 goggle and they walk you through the procedure. Now again, the thing to understand in this is this will kick in on all of the goggles from the 29th of April. It is not just on the 29th, so if you were to power them up today at the point of me making this video, your goggles will end up bricked. Might not happen the first time you power them on. There are many comments that people use them once, turn them off, and when they turn them back on, they then ended up in this situation. To give you an idea of what it will look like when the goggles are bricked, you will get this message up on the screen which says they are in bootloader mode and you may also get this other screen show which also has this logo from a software company. Once you are in this situation, you need to follow the stage two recovery. Now to walk you down, they have this chart which I just showed you which tells you what the situation is. So if you have not powered up yet, you follow procedure two and that is the case for all of the goggles, the one, the one pilot and the one race. However, if you have powered them up and you're bricked as I've said already, and again, soft brick is the term I should be using here, 
You cannot do anything yet with the FPV ones, but the one pilots and the one race, you can follow procedure one. Now, procedure two is what we will look at first, which is for people who have not turned on their goggles. If you scroll down in this document, and I will link to this in the video, at the bottom, there's procedure two, and the basics are you download the firmware for your goggle, place the downward downloaded file on the root of an empty SD card, hold the battery status and record buttons, and then power the goggles. Once the bootloader message appears, insert the SD card, the firmware update will start, and then that will update the firmware on the goggle so this soft brick cannot happen. So the nice thing is, if you're someone who hasn't powered on their goggles yet, there is a fix for all three versions, but it is important that you do this firmware update before using them, and that then will resolve the issue. You won't have to take your goggles apart, you will be fine. However, if you are already in this soft brick state, you're going to need to follow this process one. Procedure one is what I would class as an invasive procedure in the sense of you do need to tear the goggles down. You are going to end up damaging the face mask or the foam most likely as well. However, Orca have openly said in this document, don't worry about any damage you may cause whilst doing this. They will sort you out. Their warranty conditions go out the window at this point. And what I mean by that is they are not going to leave you on your own if you were to accidentally damage the goggle in this process or damage the foam. They are going to explain in the future what they're going to do about the foam themselves. But with regards to getting the update done, they've put this procedure out so you can do it as soon as possible. So what this involves is downloading the image files located on the files they've provided. And then you need to create a bootable SD card image via the downloaded files and they explain how to do this here. I don't have a set myself to be able to show you this, but there will be tutorials on this coming up shortly, I suspect. Once that's done, you're going to need to tear down your goggles. Now, just to be clear again, you can only do this with the V2s, FPV1 pilots, FPV1 race. You cannot do this with the original goggles at this time. If you're already bricked with the originals, you're going to have to wait for more info from Orca. You take the goggles apart and they show you how to do this. And then you need to short these two pads that they show you here. They're showing you doing it with a pair of tweezers. And then you follow the process that they explain in the document. Okay, so to share with you my final thoughts on this. Now, I did do that yesterday a little bit, but I've had a bit more time to chew over things. Now, let's be blunt up front. This situation is completely unacceptable, but let's not pretend Orca don't know that. To have a bug that bricks pretty much all of your goggles on the same day, at the same time, is insanity. I don't know if it was incompetence, poor judgment, or an oversight. It is something that is crippled all of their products at the same time, but let's be open and think that they didn't want this to happen. It's not exactly good business sense to have your product shut itself down and stop the user being able to use it. Now, I have to say, Orca have reacted very fast on this. They even provided software on the same day to allow people to recover their goggles. And whilst they haven't been able to provide fixes for every model, they are working as quickly as they can. And it is clear that they are really wanting to get this sorted ASAP. It is, though, frankly, a horrible mess. Not only does it affect every goggle that they've sold already, but it's going to affect people who've just bought their goggles or goggles that are also sitting in retailers at the moment. Someone yesterday would have bought a set of goggles, turned them on, set the time and date, and they would have bricked instantly. And that is not the customer service experience Orca would have wanted. It is 
going to hurt them. And I really don't know how many goggles they've sold, but the logistics on this is going to be a nightmare. And that is one of the reasons that I have made this video to try and get the message out to allow people to recover them before they brick, because many people will not want to tear their goggles apart. We don't know today what the solution Orca is going to provide moving forward, but I suspect it will simply be, we'll pick them up, we'll fix them and we'll send them back to you. But that is going to cost money. We don't know how many goggles Orca have sold. I'd spitball it, maybe 20, 30,000 units. I could be well off, but 20, 30K. But if you just do some maths on that, if they had to pick up and ship back 20,000 sets of goggles at $20, it's going to be 400 grand in just shipping, let alone the labor involved in repairing them. It's good that they don't need to replace hardware. It is a software issue, but the logistics of this is going to be massive and it is going to take time. They really have been very hot on this, but people will also need to understand if there is going to be a need to ship goggles back, there will be a turnaround time involved. They will do the best they can do, I guess, but you are going to have to be in a situation of waiting to get your product working. More than anything in this type of situation, it is the reputational damage, but these things don't last forever. And what I would say to the Orca team is keep doing what you're doing. This too shall pass. You will get through this. We need to get all the users working and then you can move forward and then do the investigation and do the dissecting of the situation and learn the lessons after that. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. I hope you found it interesting. Please do let me know what you think in the comments section. Section? Section. If there's any questions, please do put them in there and I'll try and answer them. If there's anyone who does have a set of goggles in the UK and they're interested in getting me to fix them, please do reach out. Stay safe and I'll speak to you soon.